Hello, everyone. I'm Laura Wilson, the Global Director of Small Group and Personal Training, or PowerPlay. And I'm thrilled that you're joining me today, virtually, digitally, from all over the world, um, and, and just excited that we're still able to deliver some upskilling and education. So today's session is going to be all about the what, the why, and the how behind training in a virtual world. So we're going to look a little bit at each of those three things to kind of dive in. And then at the end, you're going to have an opportunity to actually do a 20 minute workout. So I hope you're ready for that. Um, and hopefully we'll have just a little bit of pause to, to allow you to get ready for that. So the, the what, so what exactly are we talking about? Training in a virtual world now online on demand, um, streaming, all of these options that are out there. The world has shifted to digital and virtual content and programming, both businesses as well as um, industry giants and such as PowerPlate ourselves. We've had to make the shift, but individuals as well, trainers and consumers are making this shift as well because of the world that we're currently living in. Um, so that shift to on-demand and digital is, is happening rather than those live workouts, live training sessions, and or live workshops you might be going to for continuing education. Uh, obviously, the immediate reason has been the pandemic that has affected us globally, but we're finding that this is also going to be a longer term answer to reaching perhaps a larger audience as well as maybe solving some of the ideas of um, financial uh, roadblocks that existed uh, as a cost to travel to maybe do a workshop or for you to administer training or to gain a client that lived a little bit too far away from your studio, from your home, or you live too far away from them to perhaps travel. So that's really the what that we're talking about. And we're going to dig into and dive into just a little bit deeper. So go ahead and get notes, a pen if you want, or maybe you're someone who likes to take them or uh, on your computer or perhaps just hold them up here because those are the things we're gonna dive into then. So as a trainer, let's talk first as a trainer, should you include digital virtual content, online training into your own business structure? Well, if you found like many of us in this field, myself included, not just working on PowerPlate side, but on the trainer side, that you've lost clients due to the pandemic, it might be time to start thinking about how can you implement digital, online, virtual, some kind of alternative so that you can still generate revenue. We can also dive into just a little bit. I do want to discuss how PowerPlate has been doing this as well because we found we can't host live workshops due to what's going on in the world. So what have we been doing to hopefully still service you guys? Well, number one, right here. I'm in my own home speaking to you, uh, and you're in your own home perhaps consuming this information. So shifting to a focus where we can deliver things via Zoom, uh, podcast, webinars, or even sometimes live streaming content is the answer to being able to still upskill and educate our trainers globally. Now, I want to really discuss three things for you as a trainer and for your consumer. The first one is the idea that you can perhaps gain a larger audience, both for your brand and for your actual clientele. That's the first one. The second one is this idea of pivoting and making sure that your business can kind of withstand anything that might happen. This is certainly not over and could perhaps as we've seen here in the US, we're taking a pause and some places are even stepping back. They keep predicting globally that we're going to have another surge for COVID-19. Now, whether it's COVID-19 or some other situation that happens sometime in the future, that's the second thing is the idea of being able to pivot your business structure so that you can kind of weather any kind of, of event that might be thrown at you as far as your business structure. The third one is keeping yourself upskilled relevant and um, up to date in what's going on in the market around you. So that's the three we're going to address right now as far as you as a trainer and, a, and reaching your clients and consumers. So let's dive into that first one. This idea of being able to address 
a larger audience than you currently did maybe pre, I shouldn't say currently, pre-COVID-19, pre-pandemic. So in, in a traditional setting, we have perhaps a, a trainer system where either you're traveling to your consumer or client's home and or they're traveling to you. So it really became about whether or not it was feasible uh, to travel and make that travel in distance time. When we think about the fact that, yes, we were absolutely you know, not able to travel, that's obviously the first thing that's affecting our business is our, our clients and consumers, even those close to us are no longer able to travel. However, suddenly when we think, okay, so how am I going to address or train or, you know, keep them healthy and fit? I can do that virtually, digitally, through social media, through other um, possible outlets. But secondarily, you've opened up an entire new pool of customers and clients that you can reach. People that before you had not considered because they weren't within a physical traveling distance to you. Now you're gonna be able to offer a service to them that doesn't require you to travel to them or them to travel to you. We can use phones, we can use laptops, we can use all sorts of other avenues to still get them the results and still have somewhat of a one-on-one -on -one or personal touch by being live with them virtually. So that's really crucial to being able to keep yourself in business and reach a larger audience. So you can really, really, really make a difference in loads of people's lives with Power Play Training. The second thing, this idea that we've got to be able to pivot I've seen so many trainers in the last few months take a different job or an additional job outside of training because they were unsure of how to navigate this idea that we were suddenly in a digital world. So perhaps they went to work in a completely different field. We need to make sure that we have a business that allows us to pivot and still meet with our clients and still get them the results that they're looking for, keeping them healthy and well. So doing digital virtual content, whether it be through email again, or actual live streaming allows you to still be able to provide the great information, programming and results that you can deliver to your clients. Third, we've also got to keep ourselves upskilled and relevant. The awesome part about that is that we have seen so many of the industry giants, PowerPlay included, pivot to create CECs and upskilling that are available to you digital, online, virtually, whether it be through watching modules and then taking the uh, practical test online or perhaps attending a podcast uh, and actually doing something live. Uh, this, these are all options that you can see, and many of them are even free. For example, we now offer our three-hour Discover Workshop on our webpage that you can do completely free, finish the practical exam at the end, and then receive your CECs. So it's a phenomenal way for you guys to keep yourself upskilled and relevant in this market without falling behind, despite being able uh, despite not being able, I should say, to travel physically to these conferences, conventions, and education workshops. So those are three big things about the why. Why should we consider doing this? Now, the meat and potatoes. We're going to spend a significant amount of time talking about how. How can you do this? Well, I'm hoping that some of you have participated perhaps in some of the things that we've been doing at PowerPlay. Number one, I just mentioned it, taking that Discover workshop or upskilling workshop that you can do and receiving CECs completely online. So you get a little idea, a little taste of what's out there. It's provided in YouTube clips that trainers can watch at their own speed and then finish the test on their own and get everything emailed back to them. We've also been creating content through our live content streaming on Facebook, on um, Instagram, and then eventually putting them onto YouTube, Facebook, and IGTV. So these are live sessions. So if perhaps you typically run 
sessions during the day that you allow people to book into, for example, running the uh, power play small group training, you can be running those sessions just as if they were there working out with you. They're just going to be doing it from their home. And in fact, people can even do it even if they don't have a power plate. So if you're a power plate trainer and you're thinking, man, half my clients don't have power plates, they can certainly join you without a power plate. And then hopefully they'll be incentivized to maybe even get one for their own home. But if not, those live streaming kind of follow along sessions are a great way to generate users, content, followers uh, that kind of dial in. Now you're thinking, well, that doesn't really generate revenue. In this case, the example that I'm giving how PowerPlay did it, it does not. We were not asking for revenue for those sessions. We were looking for engagement and to broaden our pool of who is aware of PowerPlay, who's participating with us in PowerPlay. You know, there were a lot of users that are now PowerPlay followers that don't have PowerPlates, that didn't know what PowerPlay was until Sylvie, myself, and Caroline started doing the weekly online sessions on both Facebook and Instagram. So that's when I talk about being able to, you guys can be, can create a much larger customer pod, a much larger customer reach by doing some of those follow alongs, like check this out, try this out. Then when people become addicted, when they see what you are doing actually makes them feel really good, or perhaps they even start to see results, sleeping better, better energy levels, those types of things, you can incentivize, you can then generate revenue for them to come to perhaps the paying side as a client. So making sure that we are garnering engagement is the first step using those social media tools. So using Facebook, using Instagram, um, WeChat, uh, I'm gosh, I'm trying to think WhatsApp, you know, we have lots of different uh, social tools out there to garner engagement. Again, what does that mean exactly? It means you want them to interact with you. Just having a like is not engagement. We want them to come watch the whole session, participate with you. You're saying, hey, give me a thumbs up, guys, when they're on there so that they give you just a little bit more because that's what's going to get them connected to you as a trainer. And using those first initial social media outlets are a great way to do that. And I would even recommend doing it without asking for any kind of payment. And that's how you're really going to keep them engaged at this level to hopefully then move them to that next level. So what is that next level? Well, for example, you're going to perhaps set up private meetings, whether it's through GoToMeeting, Zoom is another really popular one, Skype. These are all free services that you can use that you have to give out an invite to, to allow them into the meeting. So in that case, you can simply create an account, whether it's GoToMeeting, Zoom, Skype, et cetera, or perhaps you already have one, and then schedule a meeting advertise that that class, that session, et cetera, is happening. And then say, hey, if you want the meeting ID, you know, message me. Then in that message, you can explain to them what your, your charge is, whether it's a donation or if you're setting up, you know, for 10 sessions you can attend and each one costs. So it's, it's absolutely um, customizable depending on how you want to, to create sessions or allow for training in that uh, mode of business, engagement, and then getting them into a session. Perhaps you actually want to sell packages, training someone one-on-one -on -one or um, training small groups and setting up a specific time. Okay, you know, we're gonna train every Monday at 11. Setting up that time, you're gonna give them that Zoom meeting. You can garner pay through a number of ways. Facebook takes pay. Apple Pay, if you have an iPhone, Apple Pay with Venmo, Venmo, there's PayPal, there's loads of services out there, again, that you can look up and they are free to use that you can actually set up for your clients to be able to pay you. Again, whether it's the sessions you're scheduling and sending out an invite or scheduling the time ahead of, uh, ahead of the schedule and then pulling them into that Zoom uh, go-to meeting or perhaps the Skype session. So now you're starting to see some of the things that you might need 
to be able to do this. Facebook and social media, uh, Instagram, et cetera, are gonna be those ways that we garner that initial contact. So making sure that you have those accounts and that you're actually active, meaning posting every day. More people are going to look at those accounts if you're posting once or perhaps twice a day, like once in the morning, once in the evening. And then responding. When someone responds to your post, make sure you comment back to them because more people then will see your post or will see your Instagram um, pop up in their feed if you respond to it, especially within those first couple of hours of when you post. Try to keep going back to the post and checking to see if you can respond to anyone. I know there's so many crazy things to think about. Then that engagement means you've also got to have that ability to link them somewhere. So go get yourself a Zoom, go get yourself a GoToMeeting, a Skype account, whatever it is. Because then when you get ready to actually do the session, you're gonna have to consider, how am I delivering this? Do I need a microphone? Because I'm gonna be standing really far away. There are lots of different microphone choices that actually plug right into your phone and then you actually wear the microphone or it can clip on or it can plug into your computer so that you could even be playing music in the background on a, a, maybe a Bluetooth speaker in addition to them having your microphone being really clear so that they can hear you and you're not yelling if you're standing back uh, from the camera so that they can see your full body. So we have to have some kind of audio Music is optional, that's completely up to you. You're gonna need a camera, whether it be using your phone, or in this case, I'm actually using my laptop, which I do often when I talk about doing Zoom meetings, Skypes, or uh, go-to meeting, as I just use the camera that's in my laptop. Then the next thing you can consider is maybe a tripod. If you are using your phone, you might need to invest in a tripod to hold the camera and phone in place because I've actually been on lives where someone's camera fell over, they didn't have it in a tripod, um, it kind of disrupts the whole session. So making sure that your phone is securely in place as you're getting ready to set up the meeting, open the meeting, or your laptop in place, uh, one of the two. Last but not least, you're going to make sure that everything is working before you start getting all your equipment ready that they can see and hear you on the camera. So you always wanna have a couple of um, uh, practice sessions, I guess I would say, before you get that set up. So we've discussed how we garner engagement, what system we're gonna to use to deliver the content, what we need to be able to deliver the content. Then the last thing we, or we actually have two things, the last two things we wanna talk about is the payment methods. Like I mentioned, Apple Pay, Facebook, Venmo, PayPal, there's loads of different ways that you can garner those sessions. But the biggest thing we, we should discuss is the programming itself. I mentioned you can do one-on-one, -on -one, you can do um, class sessions. So treat it just as you would if you were in the gym. Are you running small group? Are you running a semi-private? Are you running a one-on-one -on -one session? Typically, we would have some kind of initial consultation with that client. You still need to do that. And ideally, we do that in a face-to-face -face meeting. So in a digital world, that might mean doing a Skype call with video, a Zoom call with video, um, FaceTime if you both have uh, Apple phones. So considering that to identify what their goals are, and what their timeline is for those goals so that you can begin developing the program that they're going to be following. Or if you know you're running certain sessions, such as the small group, prank, uh, small group programming for PowerPlay, based on your consultation, you're gonna know which sessions, whether it be active aging, HIT, strength training, you're gonna know which of those sessions are gonna make most sense for that particular client. So I would recommend that you have a face-to-face -face meeting, virtual meeting with your client first to identify goals and then timelines. You're going to segue then into, hey, I think this is what's going to be best and then tell them what your schedule is. If you're running classes, you're going to say, we run that Monday, Wednesday, Friday at said time. If you're talking about doing one-on-one -on -one sessions, that's when you could then discuss, you know, we'll have a Zoom meeting or we'll have a FaceTime call every week at X time. 
then I would recommend using either email or there are text apps that you can use that can generate a confirmation so that you have given them all of the information, they get a confirmation of what sessions and then the times that they are booked into. I try to keep things really consistent myself so that I know what my schedule is each week with my clients, both virtually as well as those that I'm doing on the phone. Or in my case, I'm very lucky that we have started to open up here. So I do have a few in-person clients as well. So you've got to get your programming and goal setting done. The last bit that you're then going to consider is tying everything together, making sure that there are no loose ends so that you can truly adapt and keep revenue coming into your business. So just again, I've talked about power plate and kind of how we've had to adapt. I want to discuss personally what I've done myself. For power plate, we've, I've done live Instagram and Facebook workouts, generating content, going live on my stories, as well as then live, saving them, putting them in my IGTV, as well as my YouTube to again, garner more engagement, hopefully increase the reach that I'm having over potential clients. From there, I typically use Zoom as my form of having one-on-one -on -one personal training, or in some cases, PowerPlate small group. Because what we may find is that people might be hesitant to go back to the gym, to the studio, et cetera. Even though PowerPlay allows you to really have a great social distancing way of training, I'm still finding that some of my clients are not ready to train in the, in the physical like brick and mortar building of the gym. So they have continued to request that they stay in this virtual training market where they have my Zoom link, we dial up, I see them on their power plate, they see me demo demonstrating um, exercises on my power plate and running the training session pretty much how we would if I were there in person with the exception of you can't feel, touch, move, you know, you're still going to be watching, correcting technique, instructing and coaching them. Um, it's just not that physical presence right there with them. That has really allowed me, if no other thing, it's allowed me to just stay in contact with my clients. So during this time, this practice, uh, it's almost a four month shutdown now, I have not lost a single client that I train on PowerPlate because I've been able to shift and pivot through social media as well as then revenue generating through the Zoom, Skype, go to meeting side and keeping my clients on track. One of the most wonderful things about this is that we do have power plates that are, you know, meant for home use. We have multiple models. And so I had a number of my clients who ended up purchasing personal power plates and or the move in particular, those were the two most popular so that they could train on a power plate at home rather than train on the power plate at the gym. So those adaptations are something that you need to consider when you're looking at your business, A, to pivot, to be relevant in this moment, but B, moving forward in a world that could be shifting and changing. You know, perhaps uh, your clients decide that they're not coming back to the gym, that they've established a new habit of working out from home. Those are things that we as trainers need to be able to adapt to so that we can stay relevant and we can keep doing what we love. So training in a virtual world, it is certainly a way for you to adapt and, and, and kind of weather this trying time, but it is in fact a way that you can garner more business, a larger reach, and perhaps more money long-term by utilizing both the social digital virtual world in addition to those that are going to come and want to see you in person. So I encourage you to start looking at these different avenues to add to your own business structure so that you can find other options to increase your brands and increase your reach out into the world to change people's health and wellness. 
So now's the time when we talk about questions and answers. So I'm gonna allow you to submit those to Leo and Steve so that I can come back and answer those for you. So any questions you have all about training in a virtual world, whether it's the what, the why, or the how, I am happy to answer those because I've been navigating this world myself and I am here to help you guys um, start branching out if you haven't already. And it's time to get changed and get ready for a workout. So you're going to experience a about a 20 minute virtual workout and what that would look like if you were participating with me. So you're gonna experience it as the consumer. You can see how I coach, move, do, and show. And then hopefully you can replicate this yourself in your own home. So I will see you soon.